Hey guys, Will here. So today we're going to be taking a look at my first piece of Italian made sim racing hardware, the Cube Controls GT Pro Wireless Wheel. So we'll be unboxing, having a look at how it all hooks up to the PC using the wireless system as well, and just generally giving you my overall impressions of this product. So let's get stuck into it. Okay, let's get this opened up here. So what have we got here? We got a little information sheet, first of all, some uh, brand ambassadors by the looks of things. All good. We got some stickers. Now these look to be very high quality stickers as I would expect. All individually cut with a bleed on them as well. So there's no white edge. So we'll get some of those installed a little bit later on. It looks like we actually do have some that have already been installed here. I don't know whether that was done from factory or maybe this wheel that they've sent me might have been uh, previously used or used as a demonstration or something like that. But a massive array of different stickers here. You can see all of the various options that you could ever possibly think to need. Uh, I certainly can't think of anything that I would need in addition to that. So they certainly seem to have all the bases covered there. So we'll set the stickers aside just for now. A little piece of foam to keep the wheel protected. We've got a shirt in there as well. I'm not sure whether this is something that they include for everybody or something that they've just sent me, but we'll quickly have a look at that as well. Chuck that down on the ground. So cube controls logo on the front and a plain back. So certainly not complaining about a free shirt. What size is it? Medium. So hopefully it'll fit me. Hopefully it's not too tight, but we'll check that out later on as well. All right, main event. Let's pull this wheel out. Okay, I'll set the box aside as well so we can see what we've got here. Oh yes. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, I'll set this plastic out of the way. So, as you can see, I've opted for the OMP variant. Now, there are four different variants available in the GT Pro wireless wheel. We've got the Motomec GT steering wheel version, or the GT Lite. We've got the OMP GT Pro, which is the one we have here. Then we have the Momo and the Sparco variants as well. So, all similar designs, all the same button plate, just a slightly different wheel. So, I just went with the OMP one. I've never had an OMP wheel before, so I thought it'd be worth checking it out. And I quite like the design and ergonomics of this wheel in particular as well. And I've got to say straight away, feels absolutely beautiful in the hand, beautiful quality suede, pretty much exactly as I expected to be honest. I had really high hopes for this wheel and I'm certainly not disappointed. So we've got carbon fiber everywhere, carbon fiber front plate as well. And just having a look on the back here as well, everything looks to be extremely high quality. You can see there we've got a genuine official product sticker for the OMP wheel as well. We've got our wireless antenna, our USB connection as well. And yeah, everything looks absolutely beautiful. So let's go over everything in a little bit more detail now. So we'll start off with the wheel itself. It's a 320 millimeter OMP Super Quadro steering wheel. Ergonomically feels absolutely beautiful in the hand. Obviously we'll comment on that a little bit more once we go for a drive with our gloves on and everything, but nice and, uh, nice and comfortable to hold on the back here as well. The indentations here feel really nice and natural in your hand. So no issues whatsoever with ergonomics as you would expect, of course. So let's quickly run through all the buttons that we have here. Obviously we've got our two shifters, magnetic shifters of course, and we'll look at those in more detail in just a moment. We've got two buttons here, one on each side. Those are backlit as well, and of course we will cover that in detail in a moment too. We've got two switches here which are toggle switches. Now I believe that these are either on or off as far as the software is concerned. So when they're off, they're off. When they're on, they're sending a signal. But we'll check that out in a moment as well once we've got it all hooked up to the PC. We've got two two-way switches here as well. So momentary switches that toggle in either direction. Then we have our two rotary encoders here on the front. Now these don't click down, so they are purely just a rotary encoder. We've got a rotary encoder on each side as well and then two additional buttons on either side. So in total, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 different inputs here. Now, as we mentioned before, we do have a physical limitation with the number of inputs that we can have using the Simucube wireless system. That said, however, my Asha Racing F28 SC does have 28 inputs in total. Now, I believe that with the current generation Simucube wireless system, 28 inputs is the total limit. So theoretically, we could have had a couple of extra buttons on here if we'd needed them. We'll comment on that again later on once we're driving, see whether there's anything obviously missing. But I think the addition of a funky switch up here maybe might be a good thing to add maybe later on in the future might be a little bit easier to navigate menus and things like that with an additional button there that we could use. But it'll certainly be interesting to see if anything feels like it's missing once we go for a drive. So let's flip it over quickly now 
we'll switch on the backlighting. Now, the backlighting is a little bit dimmer on the wireless wheels to what you might be used to from the USB powered wheels. That's intentional because obviously the battery is responsible for powering the light. So they want to try and preserve battery life as much as possible. So in this light at the moment, it does look like quite a dim glow. Now with all my studio lights running in here at the moment, they do look quite dim, but we'll quickly switch off one of those lights for you so you can see what it looks like without it. And there you go. Now with the studio light switched off, you can see that they're a little bit brighter. Now there is no brightness adjustment on these. Uh, there's no ability to switch the lights off either. And that's one thing that I think might be nice. A little switch on the back that you could use just to switch these lights off if you don't want to use them. That would also increase the battery life as well, I'm pretty sure. But we'll talk about battery life in just a moment as well once we're all hooked up on the PC. So let's just quickly get that light switched back on again and talk a little bit more about battery life. So they're quoting up to 40 hours of battery life with this unit. It's a rechargeable battery that's inside as well. So basically you just plug it in via USB on the little adapter here. And I'll show you the USB cable in just a moment. It's still in the box at the moment, but you plug it in, charge it up again, and then you're good to go for another 40 hours. You do of course as well have the option of plugging it in via USB if you're worried about the battery going flat while you're driving. But you know, why would you buy a wireless wheel to just use it via USB? It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense when there is the, uh, the wired version available too. But anyway, let's flip it over now and have a little bit more of a detailed look at what's on the back here. So as we mentioned before, we've got a little stubby antenna here for our Bluetooth connection. And you can actually see if you look in the back here, the Bluetooth module that sits right up against the quick release plate. And the mounting face for your quick release has a 70 millimeter as well as a 50 millimeter stud pattern. So no shortage of mounting options there. Now, just on that subject, you do have to provide your own quick release, but Cube Controls do sell an adapter to go to a Thrustmaster or Logitech base. So just keep that in mind. Those options are available if you need them. But I'm guessing that the majority of people that are in the market for a wheel like this are going to be using some sort of a direct drive wheelbase. So probably not going to be relevant to most people. Now I've opted for the anodized black version here, but there is also a red and blue option available too. Those do cost a little bit extra, but that gives you the option of changing the color of the hub as well as the paddles. So just keep that in mind as well. But otherwise this is all machined from a single block of billet aluminum and it does feel very, very high quality. You can see the Cube Controls logo on the top here. Now we also have a three millimeter thick piece of carbon fiber on the front of the button plate too. So that's a really nice looking weave. And then we also have a three millimeter thick piece of carbon fiber here covering the hub of the wheel as well. So let's flip it around back to the front again and talk a little bit more about these rotary encoders. So really nice indentations as you turn them. There's no mistaking whether or not you've clicked them, which is a nice little addition there. A little bit easier to turn than what we have with the uh, Fnatic GT3 Porsche wheel. But uh, yeah, definitely they feel really nice. And I think they've struck a really nice balance here between ease of being able to turn them and you know, still feeling like you've actually turned a button. They sound really nice as well. There you go. Just those, those little tiny things make, do make a difference to the overall feeling of a product. And I can tell you as well, both rotary encoders feel consistent with each other, which is a good sign. Some wheels that I've used in the past, you know, one feels a little bit looser than the other and so forth. So it's nice that they're consistent. Now the thumb wheels or finger wheels, depending on how you want to use them, also have a really nice click to them as well. Uh, Barry actually mentioned in his review of the wide version of this wheel that he really liked the feeling of the indentations on the thumb wheels themselves. They're a little bit sort of sharp as he described them. Not sharp enough to cut you, but sharp enough that you kind of, you can feel and grip them and with gloves on as well. And we'll comment on how it feels with gloves once we get driving. But I have to say, I completely agree with what Barry said in his review with regards to these. They do have a really nice feel to them. Again, everything just feels like it's top notch, top flight quality. There's no, there's no sort of corners cut or anything like that. And these also have a really nice sort of click to them as well. You can hear they sound really nice and there's no sort of mistaking whether you've clicked it or not. There's no sort of play in them at all it's it's a straight click so it goes straight into the next position there's no sort of rotating it there's no dead zone in between the indentations so really happy with all the rotary encoders the buttons as well really nice click to those they all feel again consistent with each other which is a good sign and they have a really nice sound to them as well a lot of wheels that i've used in the past they sound kind of hollow they sound like it's echoing through the back plate now they have minimal travel to them as well. So they're nice and easy to press. You don't have to sort of really push your thumb in to click them. They just click really nice and easily. And again, just the right amount of resistance there that you can push them, know that you've pushed a button, but you're not gonna accidentally bump them by accident. So I definitely feel like they've really hit the nail on the head with all of the hardware that they've used here. Definitely high quality stuff. 
among the best that I've seen. So big thumbs up there. Now I also really like what they've done with the logo here as well. You can see it's sort of milled into a few layers of the carbon fiber and then painted as well. So really nice, gives that sort of quality race car feel. It also matches really nicely with the OMP logo here that's also indented into the wheels. Now just quickly before we get to installing our quick release and get it hooked up on the PC to show you how all the wireless system works, let's quickly weigh the wheel as well. So I'll grab my trusty Tupperware scales here, chuck it on, hopefully you guys can see the screen there. So 1.658 kilograms or 3 pounds and 10.4 ounces. So there you go. Now, just before we do install the quick release as well, I need to show you this USB connection and the cable that comes with it in a little bit more detail as well. So as we mentioned previously, we do have this little connection on the base here. Now, something that Barry alluded to in his review of the wide version of this wheel is that they've revised the design here so that you have a 45 degree angle on the connection. Now, he said previously the uh, connection faced straight down, which made it a little bit awkward sometimes and a little bit uh, cumbersome. So nice to see that that design has carried across through to the wireless version as well. So the USB cable that they include inside the kit has a USB connection, obviously, on one side, a nice gold-plated connection too, I might add. And then we've got this five pin connection here on the other side, automotive grade, and that can only go in one way. So it's keyed and it simply screws down like so. Now we've got a little strain relief here, which is obviously important, and then our coil as well. So I'm not sure just yet exactly how the USB connection works. I'm not sure whether it's charging only or whether it actually handles communications as well when you're not using wireless, but we'll check that out in detail in just a moment once we're all hooked up to the PC. So let's unplug this again quickly now. Now I should just mention quickly as well, there are a couple of other things that were included in the kit as well. So we've got a little set of plastic tweezers here, presumably for installing your stickers on the wheel. We've got a couple of screwdrivers, so little tiny jeweler stop screwdrivers with a Torx bit and a Phillips head bit. And then we've got a couple more of these Torx bits as well. So all the tools that you need to disassemble the wheel are all here in front of you. So we've got our SQR quick release installed. Now it just installs very simply with the three bolts in the 70 millimeter stud pattern there. But what I wanted to talk about now is the shifters before we move on to connecting up to the PC. So magnetic shifters, and you can see I've got this side a little bit loose because I want to show you the adjustability that we have here because there's quite a lot here. So we've got the ability to adjust the shifter paddle itself. I'll just quickly show you that in a bit more detail. So you can slide that in and out as you see there. So as far out as that goes, seems to be about the right position for me. So we'll just lock that down again quickly with the included Allen key or Torx key, I should say. It's actually a Torx bit that's on the end there. So we'll lock that down. And then we also have the ability to adjust along this axis here as well. So maybe 10, 15 degrees of movement there, but I'd say that's definitely going to be enough for most people. Now I found for me about somewhere in the middle there, like I have it on this side is about right. So we'll just quickly lock that down as well. So same Allen key as before just four little bolts, two on either side. Okay, and that's done. So first thing you notice about these, they have a really nice action to them. They pivot quite far forward. So rather than it sort of pulling from the back here and pivoting here, it's actually pivoting in the middle here. So they've got quite a nice mechanical feel to them. And they're not as loud as a lot of the other shifters that I've used in the past as well, which is quite nice. Now you can see the little neodymium magnets there and they do have quite a strong effect. So they really snap back into position really nicely. And it's very hard to sort of hold it at a mid position, it kind of either wants to go either all the way or not at all. Now, another really important design feature of these paddles is they actually use hall effect sensors rather than a mechanical switch to detect when the paddle's been pulled. Now that has one really strong advantage because there's no mechanical contact switch inside there means that there's less chance of it wearing out over time and causing problems. So hall effect sensors are actually used quite commonly in the automotive industry. They're used for things like, you know, crank angle position sensors, sometimes RPM signal detection as well. Basically the way it works is it's a little metal plate that uh, current or electricity is passed through. And when you introduce a magnetic field, obviously in this case being the magnetic field from the magnet on the back of the paddle here, what it does is it alters the flow across that metal plate. And what you can do is you can detect the potential difference or the voltage between the two sides of the plate as a signal. And then that difference in the signal can be used to determine either proximity or in the case of what we have here to be used to detect either an on or off position in lieu of a mechanical switch. So quite a clever design here. Now, one thing that is important to note is you can see there's this little screw here and as well another one on this side as well. Now, if you remove those screws, it actually allows access to a little trim pot inside. Now, what I found 
is I did actually have to make an adjustment to the amplifier for these Hall Effect sensors to get my left hand side paddle working correctly. As it shipped out of the box, it was, uh, it was showing as always being on. So it's great that they've actually thought ahead and allowed access to those two trim pots underneath these screws so that you guys don't have to pull your wheels apart to access those if you do need to adjust them like I did. But what I will do now is I'll pull this apart so I can actually show you that in a little bit more detail. So with the wheel disassembled, you can see the two trim pots here that we needed to adjust to get those Hall Effect sensors calibrated correctly. Now it's interesting that they haven't put any sort of a seal on these trim pots to lock them in position. I don't know whether maybe the calibration changes over time or something like that, but back when I used to work in the electronics industry and calibration industry, what we used to do is we actually used to just put a little bit of nail polish on trim pots to lock them in position once we'd adjusted them. So I was a little bit surprised that they haven't done that, but I'm sure they do have a good reason for that. But a couple of other interesting things to point out to you just while we've got this open. This is the Bluetooth module that I was telling you about before. So the wireless module that connects to your SimiCube 2. You can see the little antenna plug there as well, which connects to this antenna here. So pretty much as expected, standard sort of antenna for a Bluetooth module. Now you can see behind here as well the battery. I'm not going to pull it apart any further, but that's the little uh, lithium ion battery, I believe it is, sitting behind there. And you can also see this connection here, which is the physical connection for the power that goes to the USB connection on the other side. So that is our USB connection there. So you can see it's only actually using the two pins. So there is no data connection via USB to the PC. And indeed, when I hooked it up to the PC, there was no connection detected at all. So it is literally just charging via that USB port for those who might be wondering. Now that makes perfect sense because there's no reason why you would want to connect something that you paid extra for wireless for via USB. So otherwise you can see it's a custom designed PCB by Cube Controls in collaboration with SimiCube Wireless as well for the Bluetooth module. And all very modular as well. Everything unplugs and plugs in. You can see the two connections there for the Hall Effect sensors. The rotary encoders are all physically connected as well. So let's get it all put back together now and I'll show you how to connect up the wireless. get this wheel mounted on the quick release here put the pin in as well and I'll show you how to get this all hooked up on the wireless so we switch it on the little button on the back that I showed you before we'll switch it on there and what we should see under the wireless tab here scan indicator there it is it's popped up already so we click on that we click on connect to selected device and we should now there we go all right so we can see battery voltage 4.02 volts and connection strength you can see there is 70 percent so let's spin that around quickly and have a look at the connection now just one quick note on signal strength here when i reassembled the wheel uh initially after pulling it apart to show you guys the insides i found i was having all sorts of problems with connectivity and those of you might have been watching my stream the other night would have seen i was having some disconnection issues and my signal strength was sort of sitting around sort of four to twenty percent now what i found is that the antenna cable for the Bluetooth module needs to be routed in a very specific way internally. So what I would recommend is if you pull it apart, make sure you take note of exactly how the cables are routed through the housing when you do so. So I pulled it apart again and rerouted that cable. When I put everything back together again, my signal strength was back up to the sort of 60 to 80% mark, exactly the same as it is with my Asher racing wheel. And yeah, as you can see, if I rotate it all the way around, connection strength there is not dropping below about 70%. So all looks good. Now, another really important thing here that I want you guys to understand is that this is using a proprietary Bluetooth protocol. So it will only connect to the wireless module in a SimiCube or SimiCube 2. So you can't connect this via Bluetooth to a PC. It does require a very specific protocol. It's not going to connect via your phone or anything else like that. So just take note, you do need to have a SimiCube wireless system. So the SimiCube 1 with the add-on module or a SimiCube 2 to use this wireless wheel. Now, with the latest version of the TrueDrive software, version 2020, Point one. There is a bit of a lag in how the inputs are detected. You can see if I push the paddles here, the little indicator lights do take a little while to light up. Now, what I want to show you quickly here is if we go into the Windows profile instead, you can see when we push the buttons here, they're all detected very, very quickly. But we'll talk a little bit about input lag and things like that if there is any once we go for a drive in just a moment. But you can see all my various inputs are detected. Now, another thing I just wanted to quickly show you here as well as these toggle switches at the top of the wheels. So you can see here when I change the position here, 
button number 22 is lighting up momentarily. So basically well, the way that works is it's like a momentary switch but in a fixed position. So every time you toggle it, it sends a pulse. So I'm actually using these for my windscreen wiper and headlights inside the games. So every time I flick it, it detects the change in position and activates or deactivates depending. So it's not constantly sending a signal, it's just that individual pulse when we flick the position of the switch. Everything else is working pretty much exactly as we would expect. All the paddles are being detected. Our rotary encoders are detected as an up or down movement. Same deal with our ones on the front of the wheel as well. So let's go for a drive. So going for a drive now, I jumped in a McLaren around the LA Canyons in a Soto course. I thought it'd be fun to just sort of go for a casual drive and really sort of absorb everything that this wheel has to offer. So first thing I noticed before I even started driving was obviously checked out the flex in the wheel, found that there was absolutely minimal flex in the wheel. Actually, I think this is probably one of the stiffest wheels that I've ever tried. The suede feels absolutely beautiful as well, so much so that I was actually reluctant to put on gloves. I wanted to sort of drive it and see what it felt like, but it's really lush, really sort of uh, supple and you can sort of stroke it and it, uh, it fluffs up and you know does all the things that beautiful high quality suede does. So that's really nice as well. But I did put my gloves on because I don't want to get dead skin all over this beautiful wheel and set off for a drive. So straight away shifters feel absolutely beautiful and I did appreciate that they are quite a bit quieter when driving than all the other wheels that I've tried previously. So that, that sort of metal to metal click that you get with some wheels, definitely not quite so harsh with this wheel. So I did definitely appreciate that. The action feels really nice on these as well. As I mentioned before with the pivot point being a little bit closer to the center rather than not on the inside. They do have a really nice mechanical feel to them, very easy to pull. I would go as far as to say it would be basically impossible to miss shift with this and I didn't have any issues with latency or lag or anything like that either. The shifting was all instant and uh, yeah, no discernible input lag whatsoever with any of the buttons, so that was all good. Now ergonomically, everything felt great as well. The rotary encoders for the thumbs down on the sides are a little bit awkward to get to. You kind of, you have to either roll your hand around and actuate them with your thumbs or you can kind of get to them with your pinkies as well. They do have a really nice feel to them. As we mentioned when we were taking a closer look at the wheel, they've got a really nice uh, purposeful click to them. The indentations are really purposeful and nice. And even with gloves on as well, you can feel where you're at with them. You can grip them quite easily. And it's very, very easy to feel when you've actually made an adjustment as opposed to it just sort of free spinning. So definitely appreciated that. Same deal with the rotary encoders on the face of the wheel as well. Very purposeful indentations, very uh, easy to determine when you've clicked it and very difficult to accidentally make an adjustment. So very happy there too. All the other buttons are very easy to reach and toggle, no issues there. You kind of have to roll your hand to the inside a little bit to reach them, but that's, you know, as to be expected with any wheel. Now, just on the subject of flex as well, there was absolutely no discernible flex whatsoever in the cube controls quick release mechanism or the plate that goes between the wheel, the button assembly and your quick release that you mount. The only flex that was detectable at all, and it was a very small amount, but was in the OMP wheel itself. So just wanted to make sure that that was absolutely clear. And really, yeah, I mean, just overall a fantastic driving experience, no problems whatsoever. Didn't have any disconnection issues while I was driving either once I had that wiring issue sorted out that I mentioned earlier, which was my own fault. So certainly not a complaint against the wheel itself. But yeah, really, I mean, that's pretty much all there is to it. Just overall, a really great wheel. So time to wrap this up. Final thoughts on the GT Pro wireless wheel from Cube Controls. Now, really, really happy with the wheel. I, I have absolutely no complaints about the wheel whatsoever. I think that they've, they've ticked all the boxes that they need to in terms of ergonomics, the quality of the buttons and rotary encoders and all those bits and pieces that are used, but it is a very, very expensive wheel. 899 euros is a lot of money to pay for a wheel. So I accept and acknowledge that this wheel isn't going to be for everybody. And look, it is, it is noticeably better than most of the other wheels that I've tried over the time. The only exception maybe being the Asher Racing F28 SC, which is on about the same quality level as this wheel is. But that is also a very, very expensive wheel. And you know, it's hard to ignore the fact that there are a lot of other wheels out there that for all intents and purposes offer the same amount of functionality for a lot less money if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit on the overall build quality, the feel of the encoders and stuff like that. So I would definitely say that yes, this is an absolutely fantastic wheel and there's no taking away from that whatsoever, but you don't need to spend this kind of money to get a good overall driving experience. So it definitely is gonna be one of those wheels that's gonna be more, I guess, compelling to those who are willing to spend the big dollars to get the best of the best in terms of quality. But 
certainly not to take away from this wheel in any way, shape or form. It's absolutely brilliant. I absolutely love it. And there's really nothing at all that I can complain about on this wheel whatsoever. Honestly, the only couple of things that I thought were a little bit strange about this wheel is the inability to switch off the LED backlighting on the buttons altogether to improve the battery life. I think a lot of people probably aren't going to really want or need those lights and it would be cool to be able to switch those off. Even maybe a brightness adjustment in the future might be something that would be good to add. Really, other than that, the only other cons that I can think of are just really nitpicking. I mean, the only other thing that kind of got me scratching my head a little bit was just the fact that I had to adjust and recalibrate those Hall Effect sensors to get the um, paddle shifters working properly. I think, you know, back from my experience in the manufacturing and electronics industry, whenever we did calibration and stuff like that, we'd always put a little dab of uh, nail polish on trim pots to just lock them in their final position once they were calibrated. And that works really well because you can crack it very easily again if you ever need to make a future adjustment, but it stops it from being able to slip out. Now, as I said earlier in the video, it may well be that the calibration does change a little bit over time or maybe different environmental conditions contribute to the overall calibration. That might be the reason why they've done that. And it's not really a problem because it is very easy to remove those screws on the back and make the adjustments yourself. But it just, you know, for, for the money that this costs, you know, it was a little bit funny to have to go in and adjust something like that manually. You kind of expect that it would just be plug and play. But again, I'm nitpicking here. It really is pretty much the only thing that kind of got me scratching my head at all. Otherwise, everything about the wheel is absolutely perfect and I really can't fault it in any way, shape or form. I absolutely love it. So if you've enjoyed the review, please do leave a thumbs up. Make sure you're subbed and hit the notification bell too so you don't miss future videos. I just actually received a phone call a few moments ago letting me know that my 8020 rig has left and is on its way to me. So it should be arriving in the next couple of days. So that is very exciting. Lots of really awesome content coming up. Now, if you do want to help support the channel and help me to keep on getting things like this in here to review, there are plenty of ways you can do that as well. I'll put a link in the description below. We also have the join button as well where you can contribute to the channel through a membership. So I really do appreciate all the people that have been doing that. It really does go a long way to helping out this channel. But thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.